I'm Dr. Alice Christie, and most of you know I'm the founder of Tinkertopia, Flagstaff STEAM Community Center, where kids come to explore and discover, learn, have fun in our workshop, in our art room, in our computer lab. Um, and as most of you know, we've been closed for the last year, but we hope to open either late spring or early summer. And we're very excited to share that we'll have a new exhibit at Tinkertopia when we reopen. So before we tell you about that, I'd like to introduce to you David and Natalie, my excellent team who for the last year have been helping create the STEAM kits that we've distributed to area kids. Um, We've distributed over 14,000 of them, and hopefully some of you have been able to experiment and play around with some of our STEAM kits. Um, the new exhibit is going to be a honeypot ant colony, and this has been donated to us by Isaac's Ant Foundation. Um, Isaac's mom, Charlie Byer, is the founder of this organization, and she is donating the colony to us, and she's also helping us at Tinkertopia learn more about honeypot ants so that we can be good stewards of the ants once they are living in Tinkertopia. Um, and today, we'd like to share a little bit about ants with you, and then encourage you to go out to the website of Tinkertopia where there'll be lots of information about ants and the website of Char Charlie's uh, foundation that she's created, Isaac's Ant, Ant Foundation. So we'll give you links to both of those um, websites toward the end of our video today. So David, take it away. Well, when Dr. Ellis informed us that we were going to be housing an ant colony, <laughs> My first thought was ants, those creepy crawly things all over the place. They're not creepy. And, and as you can see, they may not be creepy. As, <laughs> as our research has found out, they're actually very beneficial. So the, I found three very fundamental things that ants do to help us. So the first thing is that they clean up our environment. So ants are just about everywhere. They crawl around, they, they find things. They, they tell their, their colonies where, they, where the things are that they found. And a bunch more ants will rush there. So they, 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 they scurry around and they clean up little bits of trash and plant matter that's decaying all over the forest floor and even in, in our cities and our, in our towns. Um, they also eat harmful insects. So they're, they're pretty hungry creatures. They're constantly searching for food and sometimes they find insects that harm crops. So they, they actually can help farmers by helping them keep the pests down. And finally, an interesting thing that ants do is they dig these huge tunnels and sometimes they can become very, very large. You know what, David? When I was doing my research, I found there's an ant colony of Argentine ants that live in Europe, and their colony is 3,500 miles long. Amazing. Wow, that's like a mega colony. A mega colony, that's it. <laughs> so these massive colonies, these massive tunnels that they're digging, actually it allows air to enter the soil, which allows plants to, to grow better, which helps farmers as well and helps us get better food. And which parts of the world do ants live in? I believe they're everywhere, except for one specific place, Antarctica, <laughs> believe it or not. No ants there. No ants in Antarctica, yeah. Amazing. But every other, every other continent has ants. Maybe we should call it Antarctica. 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 <laughs> So what exactly are ants? It turns out that they're, they're insects, so they share a lot of, in common with other insects. They have similar characteristics. Specifically, all insects have three body parts. The first body part is the head. The head of an ant has very large and strong mandibles that they use for all sorts of things. They, they dig with their mandibles, they fight other ants or other insects with their mandibles, they can even um, cut open the pupae to help in childbearing for, for their little the baby ants. There's even a story in an African colony where they use ants as sutures. They would take the ant and take its mandibles and attach it right to where, any, where their wounds were. 
and that would actually hold the wound shut. That's how strong their mandibles are. Amazing. Very interesting. And then they would pinch the little bodies off and leave the head right. as sutures. That very, very interesting thing. Use, useful ants. That's not actually added to my first section. Um, the second part of the ant is the thorax. That's the central part. That is where most of the, the ants uh, digestion go, happens and a lot of their, their organs are, their heart, and those types of things. And finally, the abdomen, which is called the gaster in ants, is the, 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 the back part, which also has stingers in some ants, which was a, a scary thought that we found in our research. The honeypot ants that we will be housing at Tinkertopia, the gaster on some, some of the ants in the colony becomes really, really engorged. It grows with food. Those are called repletes. Replete, as, as we're told. And the other ants in the colony will actually use these replete ants as a source of food in times where the food is not, is not available in winter or in dry seasons. And you know what, David, I want to tell you. Um, we are learning so much from Charlie that just keep in mind that all sorts of people around us um, can help us learn. And even as adults, um, we learn from other people all the time. Never, never stop learning, absolutely. <laughs> so finally, the, the uh, ants have, over top of all of their sections, they have an exoskeleton. And it's, it's different than what we have. We have bones, and that sort of holds us up and gives us support to fight gravity. But ants don't have any bones. They've just got a hard exoskeleton that protects them from drying out and from getting crushed from things. It holds, holds them up. So that's a, that's a thing that they share with all insects. And I'd like to add a little more information about the ant's legs. So each ant has six legs coming out of its body, and at the end of each leg is a claw. And they use these claws for climbing and walking quickly. Now, I always thought that they carried things with their, with their claws, but that's not the case at all. Those mandibles that David mentioned, it's almost like a basket coming out, and that's what they carry things with. They also use their front legs to clean their bodies. Now, if you are an ant, you use math to count your steps. They count how many steps they've gone uh, from home in search of food, and that way they know exactly how far they have to travel to get back home. Fun fact, uh, there's an ant called the Silver Desert Ant from the Sahara, and this ant can run 100 times its body length in one second. It's because it's hot out there. <laughs> now, if you want to try a quick activity at home, Think about how is it that the ant can balance itself and move on these six legs. So if you get yourself some Play-Doh or some clay and make sort of an ant body and put uh, uh, toothpicks to make your six legs and then try pulling out and see how many legs you can pull out where the ant is still able to balance. And I don't want to give you the secret, um, but it has to do with how many legs on each side of the body you can remove that lets you see how it is that an ant can walk. That's really interesting. I never thought about balance. Mm -hmm. In this video, you will see Queen Ant Melba feed a worker. The process is called trophallaxis. Trophallaxis is the exchange of regurgitated liquid food between adult social insects and or their larvae. Please note that wherever Queen Ant Melba goes, her entourage of workers follows close behind they watch over her like sentries. The queen is much larger than her workers. One of the main differences between a queen and a worker is that the queen has a very large thorax, which is the middle section of her body. Her thorax is much larger because it needs to power her wings during her nuptial flight and acts as a reserve of food during the first few critical months as she founds her new colony. Her thorax also has a dark marking on the side called a wing scar, where her wings were once attached. Every year, a mature colony produces elates, which are winged male and female ants. During the monsoon season, the male and female elates take to wing and mate with nearby colonies. After mating, the male elates die, but the females can live 20 to 30 years if she is successful. 
In order to start a new colony, she must first tear off her wings and dig a hole in the ground. There she will lay her first batch of eggs and guard them and take care of them while they develop into larvae, then pupae, and finally workers. The first workers are called nanictics. They are very small and therefore develop more quickly, which helps ensure the queen's survival. The nanictics must then leave their nest to forage for food and bring it back to the queen before she starves to death. In this video, you will see Queen Eliza cleaning her antennas. Ants have eyes, but they have poor eyesight. But their antennas are very sensitive, and they use their antennas to search through their environment and to smell the air. They smell the air looking for food and chemical trails left behind by other ants. So it's very important to keep your antennas clean. Watch Queen Eliza clean her antennas with her front feet, and then she uses her mandibles to clean off her front feet. As she turns her head, you will see three dots on the top of her head. These are primitive eyes that sense light. In the background, you will see a replete. A replete is the big round ant that is looks like a little honeypot, which they're known as. Honeypot ants store nectar in their abdomens. The repletes serve the colony as a living food storage container for when food is scarce or during winter. When a worker wants a drop of nectar, the worker goes up to the replete, drums it with its antenna, and that signals the replete to regurgitate up a drop of nectar, and then the worker drinks it. This is known as trophallaxis. Please note the dark area on Queen Eliza's thorax. That is the area known as a wing scar, which is where her wing was once attached before she removed it after a nuptial flight. When an ant develops from a larvae to a pupae, it spins a silk cocoon around its body, just like a caterpillar. In this video, you will watch workers help a new replete eclose. Eclose is the term for when a worker emerges from its silk cocoon. At this point, the new worker is very vulnerable because its exoskeleton has not hardened. It will take approximately three days for its exoskeleton to harden, and it will change from a pale yellow color to a much more robust yellow. The process of getting born is very difficult, whether or not you are a human, a chicken, or a little ant. In this video, I'm going to refer to a couple of terms that I want to familiarize you with first. The word elate. An elate is a winged ant. It doesn't matter if it's a male or a female. If it has wings, it's called an elate. The second term I'm going to refer to is nuptial flight. A nuptial flight is when the winged or elates fly from the parent colony and mate on the wing and establish new colonies. In this video, you will see the nuptial flight of the Myrmecisticus mexicanus, also known as honeypot ants. After the nuptial flight, all the males die, and the females rip off their wings with their middle legs and start digging a new colony. In order for her to be successful, many things must go right. 
she must first be able to dig a, a new colony down into the ground where the soil is nice and moist, which will make sure that the eggs that she lays will not dry out. Then she will feed the eggs and they will develop into larvae. The larvae will then develop into a pupae and then hatch as a worker, which the first workers are called ninictics, which is a very small worker. These little workers must then go out, forage for food, bring food back to her before she starves to death. And so in order for her to be successful, many things must go right. If she is successful, the queen could live up to 30 years. And if she is successful, all of her workers in the colony will be females. Only 1% of all the queens that fly will be successful in establishing a new colony. That means for every 100 queens that fly, only one queen will be successful in establishing a new colony. If she is successful in establishing a new colony, one thing that makes a strong colony is the fact that ants are team players. That means that they look out for each other, take care of each other, and always help each other out. We have a lot to learn from the ants.